Good evening and welcome to the town hall meeting looking at sugar and rum trails. We want to welcome all participants, those who are online, and we ask that you put your questions and your comments in the chat. Let me introduce the head table. My name is Sharon Trotman and I'm the consultant for the project, which is being funded by ECA or the Inter American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture. With us, we have Ina Harvey, who is the ECA representative, Barbados and Hemispheric Agritourism Specialist. We have Mrs. Rhonda Bryan Hudson, who is our facilitator this evening. We have Mrs. Terry Vanterpool Fox, Manager Product Development with the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. And we have Nadia Jemmet, who will be our rapporteur this evening. She will be recording this session. This evening, we will begin with Ms. Ina Harvey, who is currently serving as representative of ECA for delegation in Barbados and the ECA AHEM Spirit Specialist in Agrotourism. Her work in agrotourism for the past 18 years has focused on strengthening of the policy and institutional framework in support of trade linkages with tourism and hospitality and rural tourism, generation of knowledge products, diagnostic assessments of potential agrotourism sites and facilitation of business and investment opportunities. We now welcome Ms. Ina Harvey to give a presentation which will set the tone for this evening. Ms. Harvey. Thank you very much, Sharon. And let me also thank the other members of the head table who are here, as well as all of the support crew and welcome everyone to this meeting on the story of sugar and rum in Barbados. Why are we having this meeting and why is ICA having this project? The objective of this meeting overall is the development of a more holistic approach to community-based tourism product development that has the full engagement and endorsement of communities linked to the history and heritage of sugar and rum in Barbados. This meeting would like to identify your interest in the project and your capacity to participate. Ideas from you on what goods and services you can offer to depict the story of sugar and rum based on your experiences, your stories, your traditions. What type of training you would need to develop, you would need in order to develop a tourism event or a product or a service. And what other types of support you would need. Based on my knowledge as a trainee <laughs> of what sugar and rum assets exist in Barbados, there is so much. And the history of Barbados is so intri intrinsically enshrined in the story of sugar and rum. We have sugar factories in, in terms of physical assets. We have working one, uh, the only working one now, and former ones, including Foursquare, Carrington, Buckley, Andrews, and so on. We have the Morgan Lewis Mill and several sugar mill structures throughout the country. We have the West Indies Central Sugarcane Breeding Station. Very important. Breeds from our sugarcane breeding station have gone all over the world, Brazil, Australia, the Pacific, the French Caribbean. Plantation houses galore, Sunbury, Nicola Sabi, Lancaster, Golden Grove, and some that are, haven't even been developed. Rum distilleries, Mount Gay, West Indies rum distilleries, Foursquare, Nicola Sabi, and others. Sugar museums, Arlington, Frank Hudson Sugar Museum, and our rum shops, over 1,500 traditional rum shops. In terms of tours and events, we have Distillery tours at our visitor centers, Mount Gay, St. Nicholas Abbey, Heritage Railway, walking rum tours of historic Bridgetown, the Barbados Association of Rum Shops, which have exciting tours and events. People and the communities, and this I think is the most important resource that we have. We have historians, storytellers, costume designers, the Morby Lady, the Nutseller, Mother Sally, stilt walkers, and all of the 
characters who represented our sugar history. We have our creatives, our storytellers, our musicians, our artists, songs, music, mixologists, some of them award-winning mixologists in regional and international competitions, artisans who can make 3D chattel houses, chefs, tour guides. We have from the BTPA, which is now merged into the BTMI, a Barbados sugar and rum season, which saw a mixology road show, historic lectures, cooking classes with sugar and rum, plantation great house dinners, mixing our culinary heritage with the plantation ambiance, walking tours of Bridgetown, chocolate and rum distill distillery tours, windmill tours. So there, is, and that is just a snippet of what we have here in Barbados about our story of sugar and rum. And we of course don't want to ignore the history of slavery, which is the basis for that sugar and rum story. And not only the negative things that came out of that, but all of the innovation that came out of our story of slavery. So ICA is implementing a Northern Region agro-tourism project. Northern Region because we have five regions within ICA's Latin American Caribbean member countries. And this project, we're trying to develop and implement capacity building initiatives that encapsulate the cultural and historical significance of value chains. That farm to table experience for ice wine in Canada, tequila and mezcal in Mexico, bourbon in Kentucky and rum in Barbados and the Caribbean. We want to build the capacity of persons all along that chain from the production of the material that you use to make that liquor, that final product right up into the events and uh, sites and attractions. We want to generate new culturally linked agro-tourism products, services and opportunities for increased social and economic growth, especially in our rural communities. And through the identification and strengthening of agro-tourism collective initiatives, we want to have a gender and generational perspective. We want to share the stories from the older folks, from those who worked long and hard in the industry. And why have we identified Mexico and Canada and Kentucky? Because they have some stories to tell and we don't have to reinvent the wheel. And I just want to give you a taste of what takes place in Mexico with tequila and mezcal. The tequila route, and you'll see a picture of where that route is in the area that is in Mexico. The tequila route is a tourist tourism destination that was born in 2006 in the municipality of Tequila, Jalisco, through a collaboration with the IDB, the Inter-American Development Bank, and their multilateral investment fund. So there was a funding facility there, the MIF, and the foundation, the Jose Cuervo Foundation, who granted $3 million to create and develop a council for this route. And the purpose is to increase the competitiveness across micro, small, and medium tourism companies. The Mezcal route was the sim similar. And in the first five years of operation, the Ruta de Tequila trained more than 3,500 people in different tourist services, incorporated 305 SMEs, small and medium enterprises. There was public and private investment up to 1,200 million pesos. And then with the contribution of the foundation and so on, they linked up with the geotourism project of IDB and they increased their access by those 400 million visitors who look for geotourism. Just a bit back to Barbados. In the BAMC's strategic plan, as well as in ICA's plans over the years, and the Ministry of Agriculture, we saw that there could be a project in St. George with the Buckley factory, whereby we can have a ruta, the, the azucar, a ruta of sugar cane, a ruta that would depict the story of sugar and rum that would form a core project for a number of trails across the country. 
and we developed in 2019 a proposal to have a sugar museum and community events, sites, attractions, and so on, on sugar and rum, centered around the Buckley factory and centered around the Living Sugar Museum. And these are just ideas of what a Living Sugar Museum could be. And it, it doesn't have to be at Buckley, it could be at other factories, but this is what could happen. We can have a virtual reality center having simulated trips from the field through to the production of sugar and rum, working exhibitions, a chattel house village of gift shops, a theater with films on story of sugar and rum and plantation life, an art gallery, a laboratory with a tour showcasing scientists. And we have some Barbadian scientists in the US who have done fabulous things with sugar technology and a lot of value added products. We can have a packaging center for Barbados sugar, a heritage restaurant, a rum shop, a spa, walkways depicting not only the varieties of sugarcane that were developed here at the West Indies Sugarcane Breeding Station, but also walkways depicting the pests and diseases that affect our sugarcane production. And a playground, we can have all of those things. And I used those examples because these are the things that I saw on visiting a sugar museum in Guadeloupe some years ago called Pays de Lacan. And they had all of this, a virtual reality center, a village, a theater where you sat down and saw the film of, of sugar and rum, a laboratory and, uh, sorry. And they had all of these features. What was fascinating to me was on the compound, and I brought a, a, an example to show you all. On the compound, they had a sugar packaging center and they packaged the sugar with a standard form fill seal packaging machine into these little five, five gram packages of sugar, like little pyramids. And the packaging showed the French madras, that pattern so that we can have, for example, our Barbadian colors in the packaging. And then they used as the secondary packaging, this is just one example, a tin. And this tin now depicts the art of the country showing the history of sugar and sugar being packaged onto ships on the docks. And what we can have, for example, in Barbados is a whole series of collector tins where our artists and our creatives can sell their art with collector tins. I'm sure many of you buy the Christmas biscuits, the Dutch biscuits, butter cookies in those tins or tins with showing winter scenes. We can create our own collector series of packaging based on what we have of the tradition of our story of sugar and rum. I'm not gonna take a long time because tonight is about hearing from you. So having excited you, I hope, with all of these ideas, I'm now gonna turn back over to Sharon and Rhonda so that they can work with you to elicit some ideas about what you think should be depicted as the story of sugar and rum in Barbados, where we can have trails, where you think we can really have some exciting sites, events and attractions, and what we can do to support you by way of training and other capacity building, how to run a small business, how to welcome guests, how to do all of your products and services. So I'm gonna end there and turn over to Sharon. Thank you, Ina. Now we will have Rhonda Brian Hudson, who will be taking part, taking control of the community participant engagement session this evening. Mrs. Brian Hudson is currently a management consultant trainer and is responsible for the development coordination and delivery of training and development which drive employee engagement, youth development, entrepreneurship, service quality, and service excellent. Rhonda is also known for her involvement with the National Paris Independence Committees, where she has been from inception, I believe, involved with the St. James PIC. And Rhonda has also conducted a number of these sessions for the BTMI, and 
we have, they have been more than happy. So it was my pleasure to invite Rhonda to come now and manage this particular segment of the proceedings this evening. Rhonda? Thank you so much, Sharon. Thank you so much, Ina, for making my job easy in terms of setting the atmosphere and getting the excitement going in terms of what we are looking at tonight. And as, as was so aptly already put on the table, Barbados is the birthplace of rum. And it means that there is so much richness, so much involvement with sugar and rum. And at all levels of our society, this is an integral part of who we are. And it doesn't mean that we may have to directly be a part of it, but it presents so many opportunities for us. So tonight we want to look at what those opportunities are, how we can take what may be an idea that you may have passed. You know, you may be living in Mount Gay or passing the sugarcane fields all the time and you're saying, I wonder, I think, hmm, I, you know, and you have all these ideas circulating in your head, but you've never had an opportunity to express those ideas. Tonight is the night. And anything that you see, you know, we, we're gonna value it because that's the environment that we're setting tonight. So if you are online and you're tuned in, we invite you to begin to put your questions, your comments into the chat so that we can engage you. Now, the approach that I wanna take tonight is I want us to look back and look forward as we are delving into our topic and presenting our ideas and seeing where we can go and what direction we can move. So the first thing I want us to do is to do a little discovery. Now, Ina would have done some of that discovery just now in her presentation, but where you are in your respective communities, she has not touched on those things that you may be aware of or that you have been involved in. So we wanna find out what is happening in your community that has any relations to sugar and rum, how your community life is involved, how do these things fit together and move together. And then as we continue our conversation, I want us to dream. And the dream is about where do we want to see our community be? How can sugar and rum help us to achieve the goals and the aspirations that we have? And then I want us to take that dream and begin to flesh it out. You know, put some bones on the skeleton and saying, this is a dream and how do we now make this dream a reality? And after we've done that, I want us to look at how we can deliver. What are the strategies? How can ECA assist us and where we want to go? How can this partnership be strengthened? So begin to put your questions in the chat and I'm gonna ask you a very simple question to get us going. And the question simply is, what makes you happy to be a resident of your community. Don't overthink the question. It may be something very simple. It may be the people that you interact with. It may be the very roads that you travel. It may be the history of your area. But what is it about your community that drives some excitement? And you would love for everybody in Barbados, in St. Peter, in St. James, in St. Andrew, in St. Lucy to actually experience and be a part of. So begin to put those comments down so we can see what those things are that make you happy and excited. When I was listening to what Ina was sharing with us, I'm sure that some of you may have actually be able to identify with some of the things that she mentioned. Were some of you who are listening to us tonight participating in our discussion involved in any aspect of sugar? You remember your father or your grandfather or you yourself being a part of the sugar factory. You remember stories about when you were a child, you know, actually cutting the cane in the fields or, you know, going through a field and snatching cane that you weren't supposed to be snatching. You know, what stories, you know, were you by the side of the road actually selling the cane? What stories do you have? What is it that you can reflect on that will make you happy and excited. Think about those things 
and begin to share. I know for, for myself, I remember as a child when the sugarcane truck used to pass through and, you know, the road was not as smooth as it could be. And so as the sugarcane truck passed through, one or two pieces of cane may have dropped off the truck, you know, and if it happened to drop off the truck, believe you me, it was not going back on the truck. And so as children, we would be really excited, you know? So if you see anything drop, you were excited to grab and go. And that was really exciting for us. So what is it that excites you, that makes you happy about your community? Any comments as yet? Okay. So, Sharon, I'll throw the question out to you as we wait. Sharon, yes. what makes you happy to be a resident of Barbados? I remember my childhood. Mm -hmm. I lived close to Porter's. Well, Porter's is close to where I live now. Was. And I remember the corn from the factory. Uh, and you could set your clock by it. Because it would signal shift changes. Mm -hmm. And it would signal, it would also be like an alarm for some people mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. I remember the smell of the factory. It is a smell that you don't get now. We only have one working sugar, fa sugar cane factory. Yeah. Um, I remember going on tours of the factory, actually going into the factory and seeing the whole process from the beginning to the cane, to the cane crushing, to the um, boiling of the cane juice, to the creation of the molasses, to the putting of the, the molasses into the centrifugal, centrifugal baskets and spinning them out to get the sugar. I remember that, that was a part of my childhood. I remember going to the factory and getting the molasses to put the tamarinds in and we would put in the tamarinds, but we would never let them stay long enough to soak. <laughs> we would eat them before, before they had a chance to absorb the, the, the liquid. Yeah. And that was a part of my childhood. And I, when I speak to people now and I say, have you ever been to a sugar factory? And they say, no, I'm like, you've got to be kidding. Mm -hmm. It is an experience in itself. And I remember for sugar and rum season, we had tried to arrange some tours of the only sugar factory now, which is Portville. Um, we, we weren't able to get those up and running, but I really wanted that to happen so that people could get the opportunity to experience that. But sugar was very much a part of my childhood. Um, not so much the rum. But, but the, sugar. the sugar, yes, I agree. <laughs> not so much the rum, but the sugar. Rum was for when you were baking at Christmas. <laughs> but the sugar was really the sugar factory was a part of my child and I could still remember the smell yes and it's I a remember very distinctive smell driving mm -hmm. up to Holton or going to church and you're passing and all the hot water is coming out of the factory and all where the Westmoreland sign is now yes all of that was the area was like a circle where the water came from the factory and I remember that distinct smell from the factory I don't know if the people who live in that area of Port will still get that, but that's one thing I miss. Nice. From, that's a nice memory. From growing up. That's a really, really nice memory. And I'm sure that all of you who are listening, even hearing the stories, are a bit inspired. And when we talk about making sugar and rum authentic to Barbados, even the very stories that we tell from our childhood are things that we can package. And you might not think about that being an experience that you can package. But remember, if I've grown up somewhere else in the world, outside of the Caribbean, I don't have this context in which to identify. And mm -hmm. we can look at it and say creatively, how do I take your stories? And how do I bottle the smell? of the factory mm -hmm. you know and we may not have thought about that but we have a lot of you out there who develop soaps you know and make different scents 
Have you ever thought about creating a site? It sounds funny, but let me tell you that the other day I saw uh, candles and they were men scented candles. Can you believe that Terry? And what I mean by that is that when the rooms burned or when you burned this candle, it was going to smell like barbecue. <laughs> it was going to smell like smoke. It was going to smell like car. Yes. And so that's not a market for me, but for a man, and, and believe you me, these candles are selling in a Sounds strange, but they are selling and people are excited. So what are the scents that we have that can be converted, can be used, things that are unique to us? We talk about the sugar, but you know, even when you do the sugar cakes, sugar cakes, when they're bubbling on the stove, also have a particular scent. What is that you have around you that you feel good about doing right now that comes naturally to you that you can integrate? I think about the sugar and I think about the same crocus sacks or the sacks that you use to carry the sugar. Once you have used the sugar in the bag, are there any entrepreneurs out there who could say, hmm, I can come up with something ingenious. I can come up with a recyclable use for this very bag that now becomes a product that we can now use again. What are those things that are unique to us that we can package? When we talk about Barbados, they, we are described as being a friendly people. We are described as being a people who love food and who love to cook and who love rum. Do you consider yourself to be a great Bajan chef? or a cook? What can you do for your community to take advantage of the opportunity that is now presenting itself and being put on the table? When you look at your community and we talk about developing a sugar and rum tour in your area, in your community, what would be some of the things that you might consider to be traditions or pieces of history in your community that we can use? What location in your community has significance? Who are the people that tell great stories that we can tap into? The rum shops have been and continue to be a place where we assemble. How can we now take the rum shop experience and make it more than just the rum shop, but now extend that experience out into the community. How can we do things differently? Rhonda, I have some comments. I have some comments based on the first question you asked Wonderful. about childhood memories. One person said the juicy cane, mm -hmm. a special type. My grandfather planted the first row that bread for us grandchildren and he would peel er some every evening when we got home from school. I kept hearing it's the sweetest type, very soft cane as well. Yes, and sugar cakes and black bitch that we don't see any more being made and molasses by the buckets from the factory. My granddad used to stir in the feed for the cows, the sheep and the goat. Mm -hmm. Nice. So that is her childhood memories. Love it. Yeah. Love it. I These also have utilizing the molasses to make something called swank. Yes. And soaking in the tamarinds. But again, like Sharon, eating the tamarinds because you kept <laughs> anticipating that once they settle for day, they were ripe already. Correct. And you're going back and dipping in and dipping in. But you mm -hmm. had to wait a little longer for the molasses to soak into those tamarinds mm -hmm. to make them the sweetest tamarinds. So those are the comments I've received so far. I love it, I love it. And even talking about the tamarind, how many of you still have tamarind trees either in your backyard or in your community? If the tamarind has been so sweet and brings back such wonderful memories, why could we not package that as you gave the example? And not only package that, but on the same very tin or on some people piece of canvas, create a story. And even talking about the tamarind, we can take that simple idea and extend it out 
in terms of what the community does. So that person who cooks well can integrate the tamarind into their dishes. Someone else can actually show us what is a tamarind tree and how do you plant it. Somebody else can show us what is the process of making sweet tamarind. And we could go on and on and on with the different ideas and opportunities that exist and that are out there. So it's important that when we look at sugar and rum, that we don't only look at sugar as in what you put in your tea and rum as what you drink as a social event, but now see how we can convert that into various products that we can use. Now, interesting question for you. What if you were to go away from your particular area for 10 years and then you returned? What would you expect to see? And how can sugar and rum make that dream come true? So imagine you're gone from your community from 10 years. What do you want to see? How can you use this opportunity to make that a reality? When you think about that, think about how your community would look. Would people be coming together more? Um, would we have more cooperation uh, within our communities? Going back to that sense of a village life where we come together and there's that oneness and unity, each of us looking out for each other. Would we have a greater diversity of businesses that exist within our community? What would the tourists be doing in our community? What would we have to offer them um, that didn't exist 10 years ago, but that exists now? What would they do? What would you like to see as a resident in your area 10 years from now? So I give you permission to dream. So there's no budget. There's no restrictions. There's no tsunamis or any other things that are happening. But this is a dream that you can dream and not even COVID. Yes, there's a big dream that you can dream. What would that look like to you 10 years from now? For me, we would not be wearing masks to begin with. <laughs> That's my first point. You know, what would it look like? Would we be still meeting in the, in the rum shops? And would the rum shop look how it looks now? Or what improvements would you make to the rum shop? When you talk about the gathering points within your community, the blocks, the liming spots, what would they look like? When people say, I'm going to visit X community, they're going there because something exciting is there, something new is there that they want to be a part of. We heard about the story of tequila. And even when you hear about tequila, I always think about the worm in the, bottle of the in bottom of the bottle, you know? And even if I don't drink the tequila, I want to see the worm in the bottom of the bottle. What is it that we have? What would you want to see 10 years from now? Yeah? Terry, yes. If, if I could, um, on my part, if I could just add a few things. Um, I think we know, we often ignore how persons protected their health in the hot sun for all these hours cutting cane. What did they eat and drink in the morning to take them through the day? They, what, was it um, dumplings in the cocoa? Was it ground food and some steamed fish? And I heard the story of persons putting castor oil leaves mm -hmm. under the head wraps if they had headaches and to protect their health. So all of these health and wellness traditions that we have and that are becoming more and more valid today as we seek natural remedies, herbal remedies. What kind of teas did they drink? Was it a special bush tea? And then for the actual health products that we could now look to develop. When I go to get a mani pedi now, they put scented sugar in the foot, in the foot bath and that is a scrub for your feet now and for your hands. So there are scrubs that can be made with sugar and you can add coconut oil 
or scented oils with citrus and all the spices and so on. So there are products that can be developed from that. There are also products from the pith, what mm -hmm. you all call the pith of the, of the, mm -hmm. the sugarcane. After the juice is pressed out, that pith can be a fibrous product that can be used in scrubs and in making all sorts of products. And this is the focus of what is now being called the bioeconomy, the yes. circular economy, mm -hmm. where we use everything from all that we have in our agricultural world and create all sorts of value added products. And from sugar, from the sugar cane, we can get products from the actual hard um, rind, products from the pith, and all the other products to make health and wellness and great food. Thank you, you know, that's such an excellent point that you've made, because when we look at, you know, sugar and rum, we're looking at it from all aspects, you know, so we have health, we have sports, we have education, there's so many areas that we can look at what we can do with it, the opportunities are there. And for this to work, Ika will tell you that it, it requires you because you have the local knowledge. You are the ones in the community who have to drive it, who have to have the passion to make it happen. So if you have the idea, they can support you in the development of the idea, but it has to start with you in terms of what you want, what you expect. And it's so wonderful that we have an opportunity to support our dreams and that freedom to look at different things that can happen. We heard a lot of things earlier that were mentioned. We know that we have the food and rum festival, but who says that has to be the only festival? Who says that in your community, you can't have something specific for where you are? We talk about, have you ever thought about the same sugar cane? And I think about artisans. Artisans in Barbados are so creative. What can you do with that same sugarcane husk? What can you do with the fibers? Is there anything that we can develop to make it happen? Now, Ina, you came up when you, when you were doing your presentation, you mentioned something that I thought was really interesting. And I want you to touch on it a bit for us. And you talked about creating walkways. <laughs> Those were the most interesting things I saw in Pays de Lacan in Guadeloupe, which means cane country. There was a, a pathway where at each stop along the pathway, there was a box with a variety, a species of sugar cane growing and a little sign that told you where this sugar cane variety came from and its yield, its um, efficiency and so on and so on. And the most amazing thing in Guadeloupe, to see along that pathway was that 80% of all the sugarcane varieties came from Barbados. I felt so proud. And then there was another walkway where you saw the pests and diseases that affected sugarcane. And it wasn't boring science or, or highfalutin technology. They had the pests like big carnival costumes and done in papier mache. So you saw a big, beautiful moth and a big, beautiful insect and a, an explanation. So it was fun and interesting for families. And then there was a playground at the end of a railway that they made from the old um, sugar physical um, infrastructure. And the train stopped in an area in the field that they cleared. You had a little stop where you can sit down. There was a chilled, glass of sugarcane juice with a little straw on the top, much like your little quarter liter juices that you get now, and a playground where the different parts of the cane plant and the different things were depicted. So we can let our imagination grow, go wild. We can even have in a sugar site, we can mow the field in the shape of crop circles, we can make a maze where you can go into the maze and, and rediscover yourself. All of these things are very esoteric and people like all that kind of craziness. Or you can recreate battles between the plantation owners and so on. There are people who put on costumes and recreate a battle. 
And all of this is a way of monetizing, but mm -hmm. in a dignified way, mm -hmm. our traditions, our stories. We can show, we can have like what they have in Grenada, where there's a cocoa estate and the workers dance the cocoa, much like how you dance grapes. You have to dance cocoa to sh shine the beans. They dance in a big copper vessel that was used in the sugar factories and they dance to drumming. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel in a whole lot of ways to get ideas. Ika has been looking at agro-tourism, rural tourism, and all of these fantastic sites and events and attractions all over the Caribbean. We have documented these stories and not just the Caribbean, but also Latin America. Excellent, excellent. I have Rhonda. Go ahead. I have two comments. So are you? Great. Uh, the first one said, that if we do not preserve the story of sugar and rum, like we, like we are currently trying to do now, then in 10 years time, we would only be able to reminisce. We wouldn't have all these That's memories right. so that true. we do have. So true. And the other comment was that in 10 years time, you will still have rum shops, but with added value. And he goes on to say he likes the rum shops. During, he likes to visit rum shops during his tours. But the ones that stand out usually have the village feel, even down to the food. And tourists like fish cakes, cuckoo, and flying fish. He said the rum shops can be pushed along with a finish at a refinery, rum refinery, to see where it all began. And uh, he also indicated that he likes to frequent Foursquare, where sometimes if Dario and his sister are not available, he can do the tours. I believe this is a taxi driver, transport mm -hmm. provider. Mm -hmm. And he also added that St. Nicholas Abbey is another icon, but it is getting a bit overshadowed by the train itself in terms of the train journey, mm -hmm. as opposed to the actual sugar cane and yes. where the cane comes from. And that experience to see the, sugar, the cane being crushed mm -hmm. and actually that opportunity to suck on some of the cane itself. And I think all of that adds to the authenticity. Definitely does, definitely does. And you know, even as you were sharing those examples just now, um, about three thoughts came to my head and I'll see if I can remember all three of those thoughts. Um, I, love, I love the concept that we're saying that if we recognize that if we don't preserve our history, then there's a saying that says that if you don't tell your own story, somebody will tell your story sure. for you. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's important that we tell our story. And even the storytelling, uh, the oral tradition of storytelling is something that can be a product. So you may say, well, I, I, I am not good at X or I'm not good at Y, but guess what? You have a knowledge and you can share your story and that story can be added to other stories. And now we've created a chronicle of stories about sugar and rum. And the history is preserved so that even when we no longer grace this earth, our story, our legacy, the impact that we have still remains. So I think that is very important. It also suggests to us that we also need to look at what we can do for our children and our youth so that not only does the story rest with the older ones in our generation, but now we have those who are younger amongst us who know what happened before and can develop an appreciation of what has gone before and take it to the next level. The rum shops, I like the vivid spiel. And even as that person was sharing, what I was actually seeing or visualizing was an actual tour in, in various communities because we recognize now that when we talk about community tourism, that now the people who visit our shores want a local experience. Yes, the hotel is nice, but I really want to know what Bajans do and what it's like to be a Bajan. So when you look at your, your, your community, they would love to visit your community, whether it's for two hours, a half day, or a whole day. And you now make all the components come together in an interactive experience. And you know, sometimes it can be those simple little things that we take for granted. Sometimes the same talking about the different plants and the health benefits are so important. 
sitting down on somebody's front porch and shelling peas, you know, becomes an experience for them. Even being able to take, whether it's the Marby bar, whether it's the sweet tamarind or whatever, and actually making your own natural drink becomes an experience and they get so excited about that. And, you know, even as I say that, the thought comes to me that there may be persons who are listening to this discussion who say, well, I am not an entrepreneur, but you know something, I would love to be somebody who would give one of those tours, you know, I would love to be someone who could take somebody through the community and give them a tour and show them what it's really like to grow up in Mount Gay, to be a resident of Mount Gay, you know, and, and, and your particular community going through it and experiencing it. If that is who you are and you are listening to this discussion tonight, I want to tell you that there's room for you in the sugar and rum profiles that we're talking about tonight. No one is excluded on this journey. We recognize that on this journey, there will be those who will be creators, implementers, administrators, tour people, wherever you fit, do you want to be a part of how we are moving forward, how we are taking this sugar and rum product forward for our nation? So that's open to you. And tonight is your opportunity to express the different ways in which you see yourself being able to participate. Another thought that came to me was, you know, of all the examples that were shared tonight, we also can create our own interpretive centers. And an interpretive center in a particular community will look different. Who are the people in your community that stand out, who have played a significant role? What are the things that are happening within your community? And you could have a centralized location where you just display all of that aspect and those key components of your community in that center. And there will be some persons who would record and talk about their great stories because I love hearing Sharon's story tonight. And if I were going into interpretive center, I would actually stop and listen. You know, you may be an artisan and the same time that story is playing, there's a beautiful mural that is painted. There's artwork that the children have done that depict these various stories. So let's think outside the box in terms of what we can do, how we can make it happen. And you know, the thing about it is when we talk about opportunities, you have to take advantage of opportunities when they are presented to you. You don't, we don't want to find ourselves you know, we're talking about the 10 year dream. We don't want to find ourselves 10 years down the road saying, I should have, I could have, I wish I had. But guess what? Now is the moment to do it. Now is the moment to get involved and to put your ideas out there and to have them listened to with an audience who is listening to you and finds that your feedback, your information is very important to our development as a nation. We talk about monetizing. And when we talk about monetizing different activities that we do, think about what those additional funds could do for your respective community. Yes, we can talk nationally, but let's bring it down to the local level. And we're living in a time we're living in COVID, COVID conditions. And a lot has happened. There are persons within our communities who are unemployed. Um, there are persons in our communities who, for one, whatever reason, are not um, are not able to go out to work, but have to remain at home. What is it that they can be doing, or how can we support them and give them the resources that they need, so that as a community that we are functioning that we are high level, that we are presenting our community and our nation Barbados in a positive way. Think about that. We talked about the health benefit. What little secrets do you know? What little treasures do you have in your community that you can share, you know? And you don't know where that would take you and how it would affect us. When we look and we dream about different products and services that we can come up with, I challenge you tonight that as you think about that product, that service, ask yourself tonight, 
what resources would be needed? What would it take to make what I dream, what I want, what I desire to become a reality? And when we talk about resources, yes, funding is a resource. We're going to put that one side. We know that exists. But there are other resources as well. What type of technical support would you need? What type of manpower would be required? What type of training would you need? What type of education, information would you need? What, what equipment, what technology would you need to make it happen? What space do you need to have allocated for you to execute what you need? Will it require storage? Will it require you to have international um, partners and linkages? What resources would you need? What would it take to make that dream of having the rum shops 10 years from now elevated and still having a good feel? What would it take for us to tell our story and not have our story told for us? What would it take for our artisans to be recognized not only on a local level, but also at a regional and international level? What would it take for us as a nation to recognize that Barbados is known throughout the world for research as it relates to sugarcane? What would it take? What would it take for us to create a living museum? What would it take for us to create a heritage trail on sugar and rum? What are the key components that we need to make these things a reality? When we talk about the different products we have that relate to sugar and rum, how do we not only translate that and share that with persons off our shores, but how do we share it with what we call the local tourists? You know, you may live in St. Lucie, but how do you reach out to the tourists that comes from St. Philip or Christ Church with what is available in your area and, and how sugar is used in your areas? You know, I, I think of the fact, you know, we could ask the question, when we look at, let's go back to the same sweet tamarind or we go back to the same sugar cake, do we all make them the same way in each parish? Is there any diversity? Who says that we can't have a collection and it's the Barbados collection and there's a sampling of these different tastes and feels and examples. So we are one people, but even amongst ourselves, we have such diversity. What resources would it take to make those things happen? What potential profit would this bring into our communities um, when we look at what we could do. How can we create opportunity? We talk about our youth and the fact that sometimes our youth are unemployed or underemployed for that matter. How do we create opportunities of employment by using sugar and rum as the vehicle for finance? Things to think about. We also need to look at what would be some of the potential risks. Think about your community. Would rain be a threat? Would flooding be a threat? Would the roads that you have be a threat? What things would impact you from actually delivering the product or the service that you're thinking about now? After you've thought about that, you know, I, I am a strong believer that for every problem, there's a solution. And it's just a matter of finding the solution. And sometimes it takes 10 solutions to find the one solution that really works. So are we bold and brave enough to try something, take it as far as it can go and modify to suit as we are going along, taking the risk as part of the process, but as we take those risks, modifying to suit, to make it happen, you know? These are things that we can look at because tonight you may have one idea as it relates to sugar and rum, and it may not work the way that you conceive it to work, but you know what? It may birth another idea. It may inspire someone else. So your simple thought joined with another simple thought becomes a mega idea, but we can't have the mega idea if we don't share those simple thoughts. So I always believe that there's no 
silly or simple idea. It's just what we do with it, how we create it, how we make it grow, how we make it bloom. Um, do I have a comment? For yes. First comment coming back says, first and foremost, training above funding because without education, the funds would go to waste. Mm -hmm. Another comment, most of all, engage communities. Provide training to ensure best practices and maintain high standards. Provide market access. Promote the entrepreneurs in the community. I love it. And I have two questions for those two um, comments that came in just now. When you say training, because training is a very broad area, um, are there any specific areas that you feel that we need training on? I know the second person that spoke spoke, spoke about best practices, um, marketing and entrepreneurship, but are there any other aspects of training that you think that would benefit us as well as we look at carrying forward these ideas? So for example, do you think that we need training in our own history? Yes, we learned it at school, but is it that we need to learn more about the history of sugar and rum as a point of, of learning? Is it that we need to learn more about entrepreneurship in terms of how you take an idea and bring it to market? So if you could give us some more detail in terms of the training, because I love, I love the idea, you know, because as the African prophet, um, as the African proverb tells us, you know, give a man a fish mm. and he'll eat for a day. Teach a man how to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime. So let's think about those ideas. Yes. As Rhonda was speaking, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about a living museum. And I want you to dream a little bit with me. In one museum, not a sugar museum, in Europe, you take a step back in time. So when you enter the gates of this museum, you are given the coins of the day, you exchange your money for a coin of the day and they give you a sheet of paper that is the daily newspaper. And when you step into the space now, you see life as it existed on the plantation in the olden days. Persons cooking, persons living in their homes, you might see pets, you might see storytelling, you might hear somebody singing and therefore, the opportunities that are available, especially for women and for families. And by the way, there's a lot of funding that is focused on women and families and youth now. The kinds of opportunities that exist, for example, could be in making soft toys. Mm -hmm. How often do you go into a shop in the airport or even the toy shops that we have here and see toys that depict our reality? You don't see a stray dog. You don't see a potong, you don't see a donkey, a pig, a, she a black belly sheep. You see a lion and giraffe and horse and so on. So we can get training in how to make high quality soft toys that depict our reality. We can record our songs, all the songs of the plantation, especially the songs related to sugar and rum. And for the young people, especially those who are inclined to do apps and things online, you can help your families and your communities to create the website mm -hmm. so that people can know what your community offers. You can do the photography, you can upload comments, you can do the social media and all the blogging and everything else so that you can find your space as a young person in this modern world and online, especially with the COVID environment, to tell persons and to do everything on social media about what your community offers. So those are just some areas. And then there's also the area of training in emergency procedures. If there's a flood, if there's an earthquake, if there's a volcanic ash deposit, how do you keep your visitors safe? What do you do in your community if people have to evacuate? How many persons are trained in your community as paramedics or nurses and so on? So this is another aspect of how you develop a total holistic product in your community, even if it's based around sugar and rum. So those are the types of training that you have to think about also. Thanks. I love it. I love it. Because I have some comments coming mm -hmm. in. 
incentive programs to entice ideas for improving the awareness of one, the history of the area as it relates to the sugar legacy. Two, have programs in schools with tours to the rum shops, sugar plantations, and the sugar museum at Portville. I also have training in how to price and package products and services is essential. Yeah. Love it. Keep them coming yeah, in. A Keep couple it coming are still in. coming, but they're not finished typing Keep it. Keep it coming in. I love it. I love it. We're we're dreaming tonight. We're expanding what we're looking at. There's so much that we can be trained in and so many opportunities that we can take advantage of. And even we, we haven't touched on it a lot tonight, but what comes to my mind is how do we use technology um, as part of the sugar and rum experience and telling that experience? Because there may be many of you who are tech savvy. So how do you integrate that into a product and a service? You know, as Ina was talking just now, there's a, you know, I think this, it says there's an app for that. You know, so, you know, is there an app for that? When we talk about sugar and rum, you know, is there an app that we can create, an experience we can create? I know we have, um, yes, mixology. There's so much things we can do. And I, I think about simple things like um, we, we, have, we, all, we have Google Maps and we have waves and all these different things. But who is to say you can't create a map or an app? that takes you on a virtual tour of the different places of sugar and rum in Barbados. And so all a person has to do is hit start and you go. And, and, and so you create an experience. And, and I know you tech savvy people out there know how to do it in such a way that each time I log on, I'll get a different experience. I'll get a different tour. Something different will happen. That is, that is a part of what we can do as well. So I love it. Training, we've got that there. We have a number of areas that we can be trained in. And when we are doing our training, I think we can also add to that um, hospitality or service quality because any product that we produce, we want it to have a certain quality to it. There's a standard to which we are operating with you know and if it is a product it wants to be one that is exportable and we may not when we start we may not be at the stage of exporting but we create our vision with the idea with the concept in mind that we're going to export I, I remember I went to Belize as a matter of fact and either it was so interesting to me because it was my first trip to Belize and we were only there we, we were there on business but we had probably a day that we could do some touring you know and I remember they said to us oh man but there's a tour you have to take this tour you cannot leave Belize unless you do this tour I mean the way that they sold this tour we had no choice but to go on the tour the tour was in a buggy driven by a horse, we went around the city, okay? We stopped at a plant shop and had some local food. We went by a local rum store and purchased, um, they were doing wines and sampling and so forth. And then they took us by the sea to see the ocean and took us through a town that was recently paved with street lights. That was the tour. And it was fantastic. The way that they sold this tour, I thought, I thought, wow, it has to be really good. And when they passed through, they said, and look, these are Bougainvillea trees. And I thought, well, I have Bougainvillea trees home, you know? And this is a tamarind tree. And I thought, oh, I got those home too. But I don't ever remember us marketing those things. Mm -hmm. And so as simple as it sounds, we paid for a tour yep. that was that simple. I think the challenge, Rhonda, sometimes is that we take these things so much for granted yes. that we cannot possibly see the concept of creating a, a product or a service Out around these things. I have some more comments from you. This one is coming from St. Lucie area. Uh, the comment is that there are remnants of a Fairfield sugar factory. 
and it is close to a Mount Gay factory in the village and a rum shop. So maybe a trail could be weaved around them. Mm -hmm. In terms of specifics for training, the individual indicated that they're finding as they go about the various communities within the same St. Lucie area, it is trying to change mindset to get persons to register businesses. It is marketing of businesses. It's the costing of the products, how to deliver and sell the services, training of how to make things like comforts and black bitch, et cetera. Those old time fears yes. and sweets that we would have been yes. so accustomed to as we grew up. And I think that sometimes if we don't maintain those traditions, we lose it. Again, as was said earlier, we will lose those things. I yeah. love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I can see how it can be married. And I have a question for you. Okay, go ahead. And the question I wanted to ask you was based on the last comment that came in. Um, how, how do you see, or, or is there opportunity when we are talking about partnership, partnering with Ica uh -huh. and we are individual, I, I sell this, my neighbor sells that and across their sells, whatever we're doing different things. Uh -huh. How will Ica help us to come together to make one product? Ica works with partners like what we're doing here tonight with the tourism partners, with community partners, and with the community itself, with the producers, with SMEs. We have a lot of successes in all of our ECA member countries in Trinidad and Grenada, Jamaica, where we bring the producers together and let them talk about their product, let them talk about their, what they see as their brand, and let them see the strength in working together and marketing under either their cooperative or marketing under a specific brand. We help with the branding, with the packaging, with design, and we bring all partners on board from our partner institutions, as well as within the community to see how we can make it win-win situations so that people realize that the competition is not among themselves, mm -hmm. but that together they can produce branded products, special niche products that are authentic, that are theirs, and that they can project not only to their community nationally, but also to the world. Let me tell you some of the things, for example, in Trinidad, our Trinidad office worked with producers of rice. This is upland rice, not swamp rice, because the tradition and this goes back into history and knowing a history, the tradition of making this, doing this red rice, this rice in Trinidad and also in Suriname is that when in the days of slavery, the mothers and fathers would plat grains of rice into their children's hair. Mm -hmm. And not only rice, but other food grains mm -hmm. so that if families were separated for any reason, they would be able to plant food and have and and eat and uh, this rice now had been cultivated down through the generations so much so that in Suriname for example there are over a hundred varieties of genuine African rice that our office there is working with Cornell University to genotype to prove that this is genuine upland African rice and the same thing in South Trinidad where they now market their rice as a rice cooperative with the help of the office and with the community as red gold. It is a niche product. It is a specialty rice and it sells for a whole lot. Mm -hmm. So that this is the kind of way we work with communities. And when communities need funding, we help you learn how to write proposals, access funding, and really bring the entire thing together. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes a lot of commitment on the part of the community, a lot of handholding. But at one stage, we, well, we have to let go your hand mm -hmm. and let you, and let you take, take it over. Mm -hmm. I wanted to add when Rhonda was talking about the special things and the simple little things that we have in our communities that we take for granted. And in Argentina, there is a bush tea root it has a fancy name, Ruta de la Yerba Mate. Yerba Mate is the bush tea that they drink. 
in the whole southern region in Argentina, in Brazil, Uruguay, Paraguay, and so on. We have a lot of bush tea. And in fact, just yesterday, we had a wonderful meeting with some very successful small enterprises. And there's one from Trinidad called Twigs Naturals that makes bush tea. And the way that they've branded this bush tea is that it must taste just like how Tanti and Granny made it. <laughs> and they are a fantastic company. They're all, they're all green. And they try to make everything that they do depict their low carbon footprint, their use of all the raw materials and so on and so on. Even their signage is produced on recycled twigs and, and leaves. So that within the whole context of Barbados going green, of us reducing our carbon footprint, living sustainably and all of that, you can fit your little project into that and do everything green, everything sustainable and that always fits into the kind of words, the kinds of, of ideas that the funding agencies want to hear about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have some comments coming now. Wonderful. One is that it would be interesting to know how many businesses, including the accommodation sector, engage entrepreneurs to produce local confectionaries, mm -hmm. like what we were discussing, the black bitch, et cetera, as conference gifts, some pillow gifts for the guests coming in yes yes and why can we not have sugar and rum products as amenities in the hotel rooms soaps shampoos conditioners creams and even sanitizers for example another one is that um some of the rum shops need to improve their image in the communities some need sponsorship in the form of a facelift the facades need improving. Mm -hmm. But there's also a comment, development of rum-based recipes, not just drink-based, but food-based. And there's a suggestion, rum-infused barbecue Bajan lamb loin. Oh, wow. Sounds, he said the taste is intense, but smooth at the same time, <laughs> with um, no intoxicating effect. <laughs> I could just taste that. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much for those continued comments that you're making because you are contributing to making this session a great success. And we're putting new ideas on the table. These ideas haven't um, existed before or been presented in this forum before. So we are totally, totally loving it. Yes. In Mexico. Oh. There is a lovely rural tourism community project called Pueblos Magicos, Magical Towns. And in these towns, each town and within each community is associated with special things in each household. So picture this, you can have in your community a tourist go by, let's say Miss Mary and have sweet bread and a bush tea. They can go down the road to an old blacksmith's shop mm -hmm. and learn about all of the foundry operations that were required for running the plantation and for running the sugar mill. They can go to somewhere where somebody is plaiting dung baskets and find out how you plait a dung basket and what it was used for. They can have a wellness experience in another house or another village where you can have therapeutic massage with coconut oil and foot scrubs based on your sugar and your, and your sugar cane. So you can have, we can have our own little Pueblos Magicos, magical little towns where the talents of the community members, the mm -hmm. older members, the storytellers. I come from a storytelling family, so I love to hear stories and tell stories. All of those talents come to life and you can have recordings of the stories. You can sell the recorded stories. You can sell videos of people telling stories and so on and so on. So there's so many opportunities. The possibilities are endless. That's right. You know, it, 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 we, we would be the limitation to our dreams, yeah. but the possibilities are endless tonight so as we is. look at, yeah, as we look at this. And, and I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. There may be somebody who's listening to us tonight saying, well, this sounds really great. Mm -hmm. This sounds really excited, but 
how do I start? How, how, how do I get to be involved in this? The ideas and the start of the project has to come from you and you approach ICA as well as the coalition of, of institutions that you see here, BTMI, we all work together and we will look at all of the project ideas. We can have all sorts of ways to get the project started, competitions, training, we, we plan to develop in this project, training sessions where we offer training in the different areas based on what you have said. We're also developing our training with a new partner called Planetera from Canada that has a whole lot of fabulous training um, suites that they use for community tourism. And then we go with all of the champions who are ready, who want to start, who are hungry for the business, and we work along with you. It, it's a process that evolves and uh, we're here for the long haul and we work with you because we are very committed to developing products that make tourism the business of our people in the rural communities. Sugar and the story of sugar and rum belongs to the people of Barbados from my point of view. And therefore you should have a stake in what, how that story is depicted, mm -hmm. how it is told and how you're engaged and involved in it and become a whole part of offering that as part of the tourism offering of Barbados. I love it. And if I, if I were a taxi driver, oh, yeah. you know, how, how do, you, do you think it's important for me as a taxi driver to get on board? You know what always fascinated me as a person who came to live in Barbados was the depth of knowledge of the taxi drivers mm -hmm. and the way that they could tell you everything that was going on in the country, politically, economically, socially. It, it was a conversation in taxis that, that you couldn't miss. And therefore our taxi drivers are so important. They're the first people in many, in many instances mm -hmm. who interact with tourists. Mm -hmm. And therefore a taxi driver is the person who can take you to where you want to go. It's true because you know when you visit somewhere and you get in the taxi, the first thing you ask your taxi driver is, "Where's a good place to go? You know, yeah, where, where do I eat? You know." So, so it, it it's really is really really good to as a taxi driver to be involved, and as a taxi driver as well, you're able to give a different perspective to what the tour would look like and how the tour feels because you are in contact with so many different tourists on a daily basis and they're giving you feedback all the time about what their experiences are. And I, I, I know for myself, you know, sometimes tourists will highlight things that we didn't even think about because we have a lot of interpretive boards for different reasons throughout the island, but how many of them have QR codes? You know, and, and a taxi driver would be able to say to you, you know, my, 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 my passenger today wanted to just put their phone here and get the whole story of, of, of rum to get this whole story of sugar who says that you can't be the person who is putting the qr codes on those boards you don't have the information you don't know it but you can now create a vehicle an opportunity to enhance the tourists our visitors experience so there is so much that we can do I love the training and I want to throw the question out and, and you can post it in the chat or you could just let us know. We, we talk about, we need training. We would talk about being engaged, best practices. We talked about, you know, learning the history of rum, about our sugar plantations, about how to price and package, having a right mindset about the marketing, et cetera. But I want to throw the question out to you that if ICA were to begin, as was discussed tonight, to begin to look at these training opportunities, would you be willing to participate, to be involved in those activities and those training exercises, leading to further experiences and the development of various products and services? Let, let me add also that because the project is looking at um, learning from the experiences 
of tequila in Mexico and uh, bourbon in Kentucky and ice wine in Canada. We will have the opportunity to exchange with those communities and understand how they have developed and what they went through. And therefore we don't have to make the same mistakes. We can have lessons learned and therefore you can have a hemispheric experience, not only an experience with what is happening in Barbados or the Caribbean by way of training, but the kinds of training that they saw that they had to do in order to make their trails success. Excellent. So Sharon, I throw the question to you. Just want to let you know that I have uh, responses earlier in terms of the Seleucid area. Great. One young lady who does alcohol infused gooseberry and tambourine syrups. Uh -huh. And another young lady that does sorrel rum punch. Love it. So they are ready and interested in any Wonderful. training that we can offer. Excellent. Excellent. Because Sharon, that goes to my question. If I'm interested tonight, how do I express that interest? I'm online. I'm not, I'm not here with us, so I can't sign the sheet. How do I express that interest? Well, you can do one of two things. You can either send me a WhatsApp and my cell number is 233-3588 or you can send me an email at T-R-U-D-E-H-O-R-N-P-I-P-E at gmail.com. I repeat, T-R-U-D-E-H-O-R-N-P-I-P-E at gmail.com. And for those of us who are well-versed in Barbadiana, that is Trudy Hornpipe. <laughs> <laughs> and I am so certain some of you will appreciate that. But you can send me an email, you can drop me a WhatsApp message and we are more than willing to have a conversation with you to let you know what will be available because we are going to be offering some training in conjunction with ECA before the end of this project. And if you're interested, we would love to have you on board for that. Excellent, thank you. So again, it's, you know, the ball is in your court. The ball has been served to you. Will you hold the ball? Will you drop the ball? Or will you serve and send the ball back? You know, it's important as we, we started our conversation and our discussion today, it's important that we take an active role. And this is a part of our tourism product. This is a part of us telling our story so that no one will tell our story for us. This is an opportunity for us to be as equal creative as imaginative that we want so we can bring it to the table i mean tonight we heard a lot you know you were talking about sugar and rum but i hear i heard a lot about infusing mm -hmm. i don't know if y'all heard a lot of that tonight but there was a lot of infusing happening when we talked about the sugar and the rum and Rhonda, just to take that a little <laughs> further the gentleman who offers the rum infused barbecue pork rib, yes uh -huh. he just also went on to indicate that he was blessed with a mother who did nifka every year wonderful Big corn and cassava pone and sweet bread for JB supermarket before she passed so wow. he was very close He's versed yes <laughs> very versed you know and that even that is an and, opportunity and the other interesting about, thing yeah. is that he's a transport provider so he also indicated that when he has his various tours he also creates various meals and so on nice a lot of Barbadian foods, which he says are very well received by his clientele. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I, I uh, you know, am I, am I summarizing? I, I forgot to make this point. You know, the first time that I heard about Muscovado sugar, I was so excited. I was like, what's Muscovado sugar? Because, you know, you're listening on Food Network and you're hearing about Muscovado and I must put Muscovado sugar. I didn't realize that they were talking about sugar that I put on my tea every morning. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it was us. And here it is now. We don't call it Muscovado. We just say, I want your sugar. But again, our product, our sugar quality is such 
that, you know, it's everywhere. And we, the, the greatest of chefs all over the world are using it and infusing it. And, you know, tonight we also talked about capitalizing on our history. We were um, more highlighted to the um, sugar factory, the Fairfield Sugar Factory in St. Lucie and the remnants of that and how that's linked to Mount Gay Sugar Factory as well. And the possibility of creating a trail in that particular area. We talked about all the other opportunities that existed in terms of using the, uh, the medicinal purposes for the different leaves and plants that we have. We looked at the plantation houses, the sugar plantations, how those can be utilized in us telling our story. We talked about the rum shop and the elevation of the rum shop. We looked at the various opportunities that exist within the tourism industry in terms of creating packages that focus on things that are unique to us. Again, looking at the soaps and the sanitizers and the different takeaway packages that we can give to persons visiting our shores that will highlight that unique history of sugar and rum within Barbados. We started our conversation tonight talking about the fact that Barbados is the place and the birthplace of sugar and rum. We highlighted the fact tonight that, you know, however you look at it, however you swing it, however you think about it, that sugar and rum are deeply knitted in our economy, in our history, and our sociocultural fabric. So it's important that we come together now, take advantage of this opportunity to see how far we can take it, how we can dream big. And not only dream big, it's one thing to dream, but it's another thing to deliver. So I want us tonight, and I thank everyone for their participation in the community participation aspect of tonight's discussion, but let's make it a reality. So tonight we dare to discover, we dared to dream. We talked about how we can deliver. Now let's make the plan come together. So thanks to everyone for your ideas, your contributions, and your questions and comments during our community participation segment. Thank you. Um, we thank everyone who participated. And at this time, we have a few minutes for those of you who have questions that you would want to pose, other questions that you wish to pose, other things that you would like to have clarified. We'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. But I also wish to repeat my email address, which is T-R-U-D-E-H-O-R-N-P-I-P-E at gmail.com. True the harm pipe at gmail.com. And my cell number is 233. 3588. So you can drop me a WhatsApp. You can drop me a WhatsApp message. You can give me a call even if you feel the need to. And we shall, I shall try to answer all your questions and let you know what, what is coming up and what is in store, especially as it relates to training. So you can go ahead and you can drop your questions in the chat and we shall try to address those. In addition to any question you may have, even as we wrap up the session, if there's any additional comment, it might not be a question, but it may be a comment that you want to make and you know any points on how the session was for you tonight or any thought that you would have wanted to have expressed that you didn't hear in tonight's presentation that you still have an interest in finding out more about? I have a couple. Um, one is in terms of the comments for the training, before the training and product development, the entire story of sugar and rum must be known. So lots of focus must initially be on education. And we also have another comment, and this is from our St. Lucie, PIC, excellent session. Thank you very much. Okay. Those are the two that I've noted so far. Okay. Yeah. 
So again, just repeat your details again one more time. Another comment came in as it specifically related to training. It was tour guide training. <clears throat> one of the specific areas for training. Okay. And the other one was good discussions. Also, I'm seeing one here. Um, the person says, I believe that somewhere in government files, there's information related to lumber from sugarcane. Maybe we should have, we would have more houses made of this material. Mm -hmm. So again, giving credence to a lot of work that has been done in the past that has not really gone anywhere, but there still is life in some of these ideas. Another comment, it was all worth my time, pushing through my headache. <laughs> Again, let me repeat my email address is T-R-U-D-E as in egg, H-O-R-N as in nut, P-I-P-E at gmail.com. And my cell is 233-3588. So I'll be looking out for those WhatsApp messages and those emails. Any further comments, Terry? No, not, not, no. None coming through at this time. I think we can wrap up. Okay, well, in light of that, I wish to thank everyone who joined us online tonight and who were keeping the comments rolling. We appreciate the feedback. And I also wish to special, especially thank Ms. Ina Harvey from ICA, who was here with us, um, adding in her two cents worth, giving us that lovely presentation that really set the mood for what we wanted to achieve here. And for Rhonda, for guiding us through this entire process. And I also wish to thank, to thank Ms. Terry Van Fox for her contribution in reading out the comments that were coming from the online participants. Last one came in, um, very informative session. Let us keep the sugar and rum story alive. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for joining us and making this session a very worthwhile and productive one. And we hope to see you at some point in time in the future when we roll out all these training sessions and when we start to develop these trails. We hope to have you involved in these um, activities in a big way. Good night. And I wish you all a pleasant weekend. Thank you. Thank you.